hello to everyone. Welcome back from the break. Um, I put the term children in between brackets because it's a generic term that uh, in case of archaeological analysis must be uh, clearly defined and nuanced. Generally, we have two angles from which we can view this topic, the biological one and the social one. Personally, I think that any, any archaeological approach that would focus on only one of these two is incomplete. I think that any archaeological approach of the subject should start from the materials and the context and then be directed towards social interpretations. In other words, we should start from the bones and uh, their discovery context. This presentation is only the beginning uh, in approaching this topic, the first step which meant the systematization of the data available at the present time, followed by an anthropological reassessment of the astrological material and the formulation of the first interpretations. We will focus here on uh, the individuals between ages, uh, between birth and 14 years of uh, age at the time of death, using the age 14 as a limit out of reasons pertaining to the biological sphere, since the social uh, age limit is something that should result from analysis. More than 10 years ago, um, I tried to get an overview image concerning the degree of representation of uh, children in Neolithic and Copper Age cemeteries and settlements from Romania. In spite of numerous faults that now I find to that <laughs> particular approach, I could notice a pattern, namely that in the case of several large groups of graves, uh, the percentage of children was lower than in the others, between 5 and 10%. Um, and in the other cases, as you can see, they are around 30%. This characteristic overlaps with a certain period, more precisely with the late Neolithic, and with a particular phenomenon. Um, which is um, the emergence of, cemetery, of large cemeteries as uh, burial grounds outside the settlement area and the particular position of the position which is stretched on the back. Uh, before that and after that we have the classical Neolithic position of burial which is crouched on a, flexed on a side. Um, whether there is a connection uh, between the low percentage and uh, the emergence of large burial ground and the position of the position, this is something that, well, we can keep on discussing about. Uh, from the cases with diminished representation of children, I chose uh, to give a closer look to the situation encountered in the Hamandia Cemetery uh, at Chernavoda. I will not go into details uh, describing the mentioned cemetery. On the screen there are several general data to which I add for comparison that the only other Hamadria cemetery excavated properly and published monographically so far is uh, the Durangplak one, uh, the one from Durangplak in Bulgaria. And because I mentioned Durangplak site, uh, here is a degree of representation for children in this case for the period of interest. Uh, period of interest is mainly the phases one to three uh, for the Hamangia culture. It can be noticed that the two percentages, one for the phases one to three of the Hamangia culture and one for Hamangia phase four and Varna culture, are in concordance with the general uh, image that uh, I, I used I set in this graph for uh, the part north of the Danube. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, a process of reanalysis of the Hamangia cemetery from Chernavoda is on course. Process, process which is slowed uh, down mainly by two factors, the dispersion of materials between several institutions, and you have here the institutions which have either uh, bones or pottery or field notes or whatever, sometimes uh, one type of material divided in between two institutions, and the lack of financing. The reassessment of the anthropological analysis increased slightly the number of uh, children, and here I mean infants one and two, from what was previously published, 29, no, uh, 29 out of 556 individuals. This was, this was a number given by the first anthropological analysis done in the 50s. And now uh, we look at the, what was left of the collection, which is a large part of it anyway. And uh, using that, we got uh, to the number of 37 individuals instead of 29. But they remain into the low percentage of representation. Uh, going further, we tried to see what type of context gave us the children bones. Uh, the result was quite surprising. Out of 37 individuals, only eight were found in graves. Uh, the rest of them were discovered in uh, the archaeological level and in what we call complexes. I was told that the term complex is not a very English proper term, but feature to me sounds quite general. 
gravy is a feature also. So complexes um, is something else. And uh, to um, for a better understanding of this context, the context of discovery, I will say a few words about each of them. I will start with the archaeological layer. What do I mean by that? A large quantity of materials uh, was recovered from the cemetery from uh, what is co we call the archaeological layer. I mean, they were found outside features, uh, such as graves or complexes. Uh, most of these materials are represented by pottery fragments and by disarticulated human and animal bones, practically <coughs> everything, like in a settlement, or as you would expect a settlement, but not, we don't have habitation structure, so it's not about that. Um, and there is no consistent trace of, habi of later habitation that could explain this amount of hamangia, late Neolithic material dispersed among the, the, the features. Um, so we have um, a large number of individuals coming from this type of context. Another type that provided context, uh, as I said, is that of complexes. In the Chernavoda Cemetery, they are illustrated by more or less <coughs> coherent agglomeration of materials and were identified and defined as such by the archaeologists that did the excavation in the 50s. Most probably based on direct field observations uh, that transcend the drawings or the photos that were preserved in the archives. There is no mention of pit contours uh, for these features, but this uh, observation is valid for graves also. So in case of graves, they also said that they could not identify the pit of the grave because the soil had the same texture, the same color. Um, <coughs> So this is not an argument to dismiss the idea of, com of complex. On the slide, there are two examples of such complexes. The upper left part is illustrated by this, this here, by the skull complex, an intentional coherent deposition of human remains. And I'll make a more detailed presentation of this one next door after noon break. Uh, and, in the, and here in the lower right part is a uh, illustrated complex one, a less structured feature um, uh, Agglomeration of materials which at best resemble a garbage pit. Um, and on the screen there are the drawings of two of the graves that provided osteological remains of children. Uh, an, attempt, an attempt to correlate um, the age group with the context of discovery showed us that there is a strong correlation between smaller children, which means infants one, and complexes. The two newborns, because we have two of those also, uh, identified in the sample were also found uh, here in complexes. I also tried to see which is the spatial distribution of these remains. And for this, I will mention briefly the internal structure of the burial ground, which is composed of two nuclei of graves with slightly different characteristics, named the uh, upper and lower, up, this is upper cemetery and this is lower cemetery. And besides these, there were also identified <coughs> two uh, ravines um, named by the excavators Richard Pitts ba based on the structure of the depositions in that area, Pit 1 and Pit 2. And this is a collapsed area near the, toward the Danube uh, where they also uh, did some excavation. Uh, they also collected a lot of materials that fell down from the cemetery area, but they excavated some in situ features uh, in the collapsed part also. Uh, the osteological remains of children seem to be distributed as follows. The remains discovered in the archaeological layer uh, were mainly recorded in the northern part of the burial ground, more precisely in the area of the ritual pits, and in the collapsed area adjacent to this. The ones discovered in complexes uh, concentrate almost exclusively in the area of the ritual pits, uh, while the one discovered in graves were recorded in the upper and lower cemeteries and in the collapsed area in one case. Uh, we also wanted to see if the smaller children were given a preferential location, but it doesn't necessarily look like that, so they seem like a coherent bunch. Um, an issue which I avoided to bring up so far is a degree of completeness. Uh, ah, those are the newborns, so in the same group. The degree of completeness of skeletons of children. Uh, I apologize for the improper drawings, but the reassessment was just finished and we did not find a better sketch. I mean, the child sketch to, to work on it quickly. The idea is the following fragments of long bones were the most frequently recorded, usually just that sometimes rarely accompanied by fragments of the skull and extremely rarely by fragments of rib or of the pelvis uh, <coughs> recorded. 
there is only one individual which seems a little better represented, which is this one here. This situation would not be surprising given the fragility of the children bones if each individual would be represented by more of these remains, no matter how fragmented. But in most cases, we have individuals represented by only one bone, bone fragment. And you can see here, like, for example, this case or this case. Um, if we consider the context of discovery, on the screen uh, are illustrated the findings from the complexes, which mean disarticulated bones plus something else, other materials. The things, well, might, they might make sense, but they are not so easy to explain when we look at the situation of child bones found in graves. As we can see, the situation is similar to the one of the complexes with one exception, <coughs> this one here. This raises the question uh, about a possible secondary manipulation of uh, child osteological remains, even in the case of graves. The answer is definitely yes uh, for the bones discovered in complexes, but uh, <clears throat> it becomes maybe in, in this case, and we have to, to look more carefully for this. Anyway, I wouldn't call in these cases, I wouldn't call it, for example, a double grave because uh, children were associated with adult bones, they were not just that piece of bone of a child. Um, and because I mentioned the postmortem manipulation of bones, I want to mention a more particular situation involving uh, child bones. Uh, complex O, uh, what is written with black is the data from the field notes, while uh, the info in white with uh, skeleton diagrams are the result of the current reassessment of bones. The field note also mentioned uh, the hypothesis that the child body was dismembered very <coughs> much since one arm was still in anatomical connection when excavation occurred. Unfortunately, the bones were not all preserved, as you, as you can see here, the, there are no uh, hand bones uh, for the child. Um, and the old anthropological analysis does not mention them either, so they must have been lost somewhere between excavation and the first anthropological analysis. In any case, this situation speaks clearly about secondary manipulation, about ritual involving possible dismemberment of bodies shortly after death, rituals that involved individuals of all ages and both sexes and definitely did not exclude children. This slide lays the ground for another issue, which is that of the association of various elements in pictures including child bones. In complexes, the children remains um, were associated uh, with bones coming from two to ten individuals of both sexes and various ages and deaths. It is interesting that about half of these complex, uh, complexes contain remains from a man, a woman, and a child, which might raise a question of intentional selection of individuals, of a nuclear family, maybe. In the case of graves, the, uh, the image uh, looks a little bit different, namely the children remains were found almost exclusively in women's graves, sometimes together with some isolated male bones. When I talked about uh, the subject of this presentation at an incipient, incipient, more incipient stage of research, I was asked about grave goods associated with children uh, compared uh, with graves associ grave goods associated with adult individuals. As I hope it became clear so far, in none of the cases the children uh, was a focus, um, with maybe the exception of complex soul and grave 32, which was that more complete individual. It is thus impossible to approach the issue of association between children bones and artifacts or animal bones because we cannot say whether these elements were, uh, so were placed there for the child or for the adult individual. And since we approach the issue of comparison between uh, the treatment of children and treatment of other individuals, we can say that out of 15 individuals with an age between 14 and 18, what we would call now today ad adolescent, um, only one might have been part of a grave excavated in the collapsed area. This is a situation for the next eight group. Um, unconfirmed because the bones were not preserved. And seven were found in complexes located in the area of the ritual pit. And other seven cases uh, in the archaeological lair uh, were located uh, and in the collapsed area. The overview highlights a more restricted type of context doubled by a more contained area specific for uh, that of the adolescent. That's uh, the infant one and two children, and this is the next age group, 14 to 7 to 18. 
they were also found mostly as isolated bones, so the same situation as for the younger children, mostly long bones with one exception of a more complete skeleton. Uh, the ordering of all the information from the field notes, drawings, and uh, the first anthropological analysis correlated with the anthropological reassessment of sub-adult bones um, led to the following general observations. Children are underrepresented, that's a fact, uh, and it's a characteristic of the period and of the area. Uh, they were not a focus, they were represented almost exclusively by isolated, disarticulated bones, uh, small children seem to have a strong connection with complexes as context of the position and they mostly concentrate in the northern half of the burial ground where the ritual pits uh, are located. They are always in the company of both from adult individuals, mm, neither the smaller children or the next stage, the 14 to 18, uh, were found alone by themselves. Um, and we have that trio that we have to follow a little bit further, the man, woman, child, that was recorded. And uh, the um, zero, 14 age group uh, seemed to be slightly less restricted than the 14, 18 group in terms of area of discovery and context of discovery. And uh, in the end, I would like to end that the situation presented here was not recorded at Ramp Lock, which was our, which is always our main uh, go-to point or to the other cemeteries mentioned at the beginning, which have this low representation of children. Uh, remaining so far both quite unique and difficult to explain. Thank you for your attention.